All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Krista Boy. I'm the Deputy Director of Financial Services. Along with me, I have Ms. Janice Hu. She is um, the Manager of Financial Planning, and both of us will be um, providing the presentation tonight. So here's the presentation outline for tonight. This, I'm gonna go over the budget overview first. So the district's consolidated budget includes seven different funds, and each fund has its own revenue sources to pay for its operations and capital needs. Today's presentation is focused on the general fund, and it is the fund in which property tax rates are set. The service areas within the general fund includes a diverse range of activities from public safety, like fire and police, recreation, community planning, roads, parks, and protection of the environment. The rest of the funds down below are based on a user pay model. So we have the utility funds, water, sewer, and drainage and solid waste, and they are self-funding entities. Each of these funds have their own bylaw to establish rates to fund expenditures. And the 2024 rate for the utilities were approved by council last year at the December 4th council meeting. In the section other standalone funds, we have Golf and Cemetery. They are also self-funding entities with fees established by bylaw in the district's fees and charges process. The rates for 2024 were approved by council last summer. And for the last fund, the Blue Bus is operated by the district on a contract basis with TransLink. They set service levels, approve the budget, and reimburses the district for all costs incurred. With each of these funds, they have their own budget process and the financial information is then consolidated with the district's overall five-year financial plan bylaw. For municipal budgets, the budgets must balance and that is a requirement per the community charter. Regardless of which fund, each must have a balanced budget, meaning that the money in revenue must equal money out or expenses. On the money in side of the scale, general taxation is the largest source of funds but it is the last resort to balance the budget. Fees and charges are established by bylaw and the district reviews the fees annually. Some examples are building permit fees and business licenses. And where possible, a fee is established for those that receive a direct benefit for that service. The third uh, money in line, other revenue includes investment income, lease revenue, penalties on late tax payments and provincial grants, if any. The fourth item there for reserves, Reserves are like savings accounts, which is an accumulation of funds for a future purpose. And the money transfer in from reserves are variable each year, and it is used as a contingency, like responding to weather related events. And the last item, money can come in from borrowing too, usually to fund large capital projects like the construction of the police services municipal hall building. On the money outside of the scale, there are two categories of expenses, operating and capital. Operating expenses are costs the municipality incurs for day-to-day -day provision of services, including labor, non-labor costs, and debt for repayment. And capital expenses are costs to acquire, upgrade, and maintain physical assets like infrastructure and facilities. I'll move on to talk, speak about the 2024 operating budget now. So when developing the operating budget, the district considers various factors to manage near-term risks while planning for long-term financial resilience and sustainability. There are ongoing factors that the district is challenged with, and the most significant one is that the tax base is mostly made up of the residential class, in particular, single family homes. So most taxes are borne by that group. This is unlike the other two North Shore municipalities where the industrial class taxpayers ease the burden for the residential class. As well, there are limited revenue sources. Besides taxes, investment income and building permits are the other major sources of revenue, and these are affected by economic conditions, which the district has no influence over. The district does focus on revenue generation, and starting at the end of this month, pay parking at three destination parks will be implemented. It remains to be seen how much revenue will be generated from that program. West Vancouver's geography is also challenging to provide services, since it is spread out and is bordered by the ocean and mountains. Services like road work or snow removal require more resources and time to deliver, and the terrain puts extra wear and tear on equipment. Even fire and police services have a large area to cover for the population size. There's also ongoing risk to the budget from climate change related to weather events, and the district must be ready to deal with flooding risks from sea level rise, as well as wildfire risks. In addition, there is a high expectation of service levels from the community. 
And as we look to the 2024 budget year, the district faces several challenges, the largest being inflationary pressure on both labor and non-labor costs. The district is faced with the downloading of costs from other agencies and is further seen again for 2024 from organizations like Ecom. And funding council strategic plan on top of regular operations is challenging. While some of the items can be done by existing staff by shifting priorities and work plans, most more significant initiatives will require resources in the coming years to achieve those goals. Staff developed three budgets, three budgets starting with the minimum budget as the base, and then incrementally added on service level choices to create the preferred and best practice budgets. Each successive version of the budget options builds upon the preceding budget. The minimum budget with a 3.22 million increase from the 2023 budget or a tax increase of 3.65% can be described as the keeping the lights on budget. It's essentially the baseline spend without any service improvements. The increase is to mainly fund uncontrollable cost pressures from collective agreement settlements, contractual obligations, inflation, and downloaded costs. The next budget option then adds on surface level choices, expanding the grant and aid program to support community groups, increasing funding to address safety, cleanliness, and accessibility concerns. And with these items added on to the minimum budget equals the preferred budget with a $3.42 million increase or a tax increase of 3.88%. The last budget option adds on further service level choices to include requests from various community groups to support the arts, address the community's expectations for recreation like trails and community events like Harmony Arts Festival, and also to invest in technology to deliver services in a more effective and efficient manner. With these choices, it equals the best practice budget with a $4.2 million increase or a tax increase of 4.78%. So this slide here shows a high level breakdown of the drivers of the tax increase for the three different budget options. The collective agreement increase of 4.55 million is the largest cost pressure in the operating budget. Inflationary pressures have impacted compensation trends across public and private sectors. The collective agreements for the district are negotiated within the regional municipal pattern. Uncontrollable costs and inflation of 1.76 million is the second largest cost driver for the operating budget. It includes downloaded costs from other agencies, um, as mentioned before, like Ecom for police dispatch services, contractual obligations on multi-year contracts for IT software and hardware maintenance, and inflation on materials, fuel, insurance, and contracted services. The next two lines are relatively small increases for varying service level choices between the three budget options. I'll go over these service level choices in more detail in the next slide. And the last line is revenue adjustments of 3.51 million, and this will offset the above cost pressures. The largest revenue increase is from investment income of 1.66 million, and that's driven by rising interest rates and having a strong cash flow management process. As well, there is new taxation revenue of 610,000 from non-market change from new development and from resuming community services programming to pre-COVID levels. And that will contribute an additional 730,000 from the 2023 budget. I circled the two service level choices lines in red as these, as these are the only items that change between the three budget options. This slide and the next are about service level choices between the three different uh, budget options. The budget requests shown here are for existing services that the district provides and there's either increased demand or expectation and to meet those demands, it requires additional funding. Starting with the minimum budget, there are three requests totaling 250,000 to achieve expected service levels. First, there is continuously high demand for tree management on public and private property. So to address incidences and hazardous trees in a timely manner and to maintain reasonable permit wait times, additional resources are required. Second, there is a new provincial standard for electronic disclosure for police that needs to be fulfilled. And the last re request is a recommendation from the Seniors Advisory Board to permanently fund the Aging in Place Seniors Outreach Program, which was previously funded from a grant. The preferred budget includes the minimum budget items plus two other items totaling 315,000. The two other additional items are a recommendation from the Community Grants Committee to increase the annual grants and aid program by 
and to establish a permanent budget to clean up homeless encampments, to address public health and safety concerns, and to prevent any environmental impact. The cleanup costs were previously funded from a one-time grant that has expired. The best practice budget totals 655,000 and includes additional funding for tra trail improvements because of continuing high usage of trails and increasing the watering program for boulevard trees and shrubs that were negatively impacted by extended drought and high temperatures, and a funding request from K Meek and the West Vancouver Community Arts Council, and an increase to support Harmony Arts Festival to address rising production equipment, security, and first day support costs. And the last item is to increase the corporate training budget for staff as external training providers have increased their fees because of inflation. And there has also been an increase in demand post pandemic. The training program supports recruitment and retention initiatives. This is the list of budget requests to enhance service levels. The minimum budget includes two requests for a total of 159,000, which includes a new police recruitment and retention initiative program as endorsed by the police board and a request to permanently fund language advertising in Farsi and Chinese for essential safety messaging to support inclusion and accessibility. The language advertising program was piloted from one-time funds and resulted in greater than anticipated engagement. The preferred budget request totals 304,000 and includes an expanded language advertising program to not only include essential safety messages, but other important information from the district and a permanent budget for National Indigenous Peoples Day for a more comprehensive experience to celebrate and create opportunities for residents to engage with local Indigenous artists, storytellers, and elders. And the last item, to increase capacity in fire and rescue to deliver services more efficiently and to reduce overtime. The best practice budget requests total 754,000, includes an expanded request for fire and rescue so that various different um, fire trucks like the rescue and ladder trucks can be util utilized concurrently and thus then would meet the fire underrated survey recommendation. In addition, a request for resources to conduct more fire inspections in a year to reduce risk and ensure buildings are maintained up to the BC building code and BC fire code. Approximately half of this cost is offset by additional revenue from fire inspection fees. And the last request is additional funding for digital advancement and technical support to deliver municipal services in a more effective and efficient manner. So the previous slides show the high level breakdown of the drivers of the tax increase and this slide here shows the statement of operations for the three budget options. This statement shows where the revenue is coming from and how those funds are allocated to the different service areas. The numbers are small to see clearly, but overall the shortfall shown at the bottom is revenue less expenses and it's the amount that taxes need to be increased by to balance off the budget. I'm gonna go over the revenue section of the statement of operations. And you can see that general taxation at 62% of total revenue is the largest source of funds for the district. After that, it is other revenue at 15%, and that's increased, increased quite a bit from the 2023 budget because of higher interest earned on investments that we're projecting. And fees and charges are the third largest source of revenue at 10%, and the budget for it increased from 2023, mainly from community services resuming to pre-COVID levels. In the expenses section of the statement of operations, arts, culture, and community services is 16% of the total expense budget. But this area also collects fees for a large portion of their services, especially in the community services area. So it offsets the costs. General government costs are also at 16% of the total expense budget, However, about 40% of that is related to transferring of revenue to reserves for specific uses. And other items in general government include insurance, legal costs, grants and aid to community groups, and provisions or contingencies. Police and fire services are the next largest expense areas, both at 14% of the total expense budget. Between the two, for public safety to be provided to the community, it is almost a third of the expense budget. I'll pass it along to Ms. Hu to go over the capital budget. Hi, in the previous slides, uh, we discussed ongoing challenges that the district faces, some of which also poses uh, impact, impacts to the district's asset management plan and subsequent capital budget. The primary uh, 
challenge lies in the limited resource, uh, reserves allocated for major capital projects. The asset levy is a relatively recent addition to the district's levies. Despite the constant effort the district put in, there has always been a gap between the optimal capital investment and available funding. Uh, as mentioned previously, the district has a challenge in ge geography. The residential area extended along a narrow corridor between the North Shore Mountains and the waterfront, delivering and maintaining services, particularly linear services like uh, road work, becomes challenging and very costly. The climate change poses significant challenges globally, particularly concerning the increased risks of wildfire and uh, flooding. It increases the frequency and intensity of wildfires and heightens the risk of flooding from sea level rise. These risks increase the cost to prevent, maintain, and repair infrastructure, which further uh, exacerbating the infrastructure funding gap. In addition, specific economic challenges have persisted from 2023 into 2024. The high in inflation rate putting pressure on services and supplies to operate and deliver capital projects. According to op uh, October 2023 Bank of Canada Monetary Policy Report, higher interest rates are working to ease price pressure in Canada and inflation is coming down, though progress to the 2% target is slow. The bank projects that inflation will stay around 3.5% until the middle of 2024, returning to target in, in 2025. Deferred asset maintenance remains a problem for the district. The work program is established based on asset ma uh, management plans. The priority is to catch up on deferred maintenance on projects that were either delayed because of the pandemic or because of lack of funding in prior years, and then performing regular scheduled maintenance on ma uh, assets. Deferred uh, maintenance will continue to be an issue until asset levy funding is sufficient to pay for asset maintenance. Therefore, it is proposed to increase the levy to reduce the gap between funding and optimal level of investment. Let's move to the next. The capital budget and asset management plan are crucial uh, components of long-term planning process. They help uh, ensure that the district can effectively allocate resources, maintain and enhance its infrastructure, and provide essential services to its residents. The capital budget process starts with a comprehensive review and analysis of all existing district's uh, capital assets, including historical and replacement costs, asset conditions, standard useful life for assets and its components, and asset repair, acquire, and disposal schedules. Based on this analysis, staff project maintenance and replacement costs over 20 year period. This annual asset management uh, groundwork forms the basis for capital budget requests. The figures are subject to yearly updates influences by factors such as inflation, supply constraints, labor shortages, and inclusion of newly added assets, potentially driving up the average annual capital maintenance expenses. Currently, this projections estimate a over, an overall 396 million over 20 year uh, frame, and uh, also an average annual cost of 19.8 million for maintaining these assets. Next. For the 2024 capital budget, the focus of the district is on replenishing the asset reserves to maintain all current assets at their optimal levels. Staff are presenting two options regarding the asset levy increase for consideration by the council and the public. The minimum budget involves a 4% increase in the asset levy, expected to generate a, an additional 3.5 million in capital funding. However, this option would still result in a shortfall of 1.7 million between available funding and the total capital requests for the year. Alternatively, option two uh, proposes a 6% increase in the asset levy. 
projecting an additional 5.3 million in capital funding. This increase would ensure funding for the prioritized capital projects. This slide provides a historical overview of the district's asset levy increases from 2015 and onwards, as well as the total asset reserves available for the 2024 capital budget. As mentioned in the previous slide, before its int introduction in 2016, the capital budget relied solely on contributions from the operating, uh, operating con uh, sorry, from the operating budget. In 2015, the 7.5 million operating contribution covered only 54% of the optimal investment, resulting in a shortfall of 6.5 million. From 2016 to 2019, this deficit steadily diminished, finally reached the break-even point in 2019. However, in 2020, due to the pandemic, the district aimed at balancing the budget amidst revenue losses and maintaining lower tax rates for that year, the operating budget contribution saw a substantial reduction. Since then, both the asset levy and operating budget contribution have increased each year to help close the gap. These two ta tables here summarize the 2024 capital program and how it is funded. The table on the left outlines the 2024 capital requests. It shows that 96% of the capital requests are to maintain and replace existing assets with 41% in the asset pr preservation category, which is to address deferred maintenance. What we want to see in the future are more requests in the regular asset maintenance category to ensure that district's assets are in an optimal condition for peak performance. The table on the right outlines the funding sources for the 2024 capital program. 83% of the funding comes from the asset reserves and the remaining 17% from other reserves and external funding. Within the asset reserve funding, 72% will be from the 2024 asset levy, which includes a proposed 6% 6% increase and 11% from the operating budget contribution. The district proactively pursues external funding sources, including government grants to support capital projects. The 2024 capital budget allocated 3.9 million other reserves and external funding in addition to 18.8 .8 million asset reserves. Now we're uh, talking about uh, environmental levies. The newly established West Vancouver Env Environmental Committee is to advise council on the development and implementation of initiatives to meet the district's greenhouse gas emission reduction targets, adapt to climate change, and protect the community's natural assets. The programs funded through the environmental reserves, including uh, community and stewardship uh, education and outreach, heat pump rebate top up, lock removal and invasive plant species removal, one-time incremental cost to replace gas-powered vehicles to full electrical vehicles and implementation of the community wildfire plan, which is for fuel treatment works. The environmental levy was first introduced in 2022. For the 2024 budget, to support the goal to protect the natural environmental and mitigate and, and adapt to climate change, staff included only a 0.5% increase in the best of practice budget option, which would raise an additional 441,000 to be put into the environmental reserve. I'm gonna move on. To you, Mrs. Thank you, Janice. Uh, I'm going to move on and talk about property assessments and how that impacts taxes. Uh, so this infographic is from BC Assessments website. It shows how property values impact property taxes. So your property value is used to determine your share of property taxes. So an increase in property assessment does not necessarily mean an increase in property taxes. The key item to note is the average change for your property class and your own assessment change relative to that average. So this is a sample of a property assessment notice 
What you wanna pay attention to is your, on your own notice is this bar graph that I circled on the right here. It shows what your property's value changes compared to the residential average in West Vancouver. And that will indicate whether taxes will be shifted onto or off of you. So for class one, which is all residential properties, the average change is a decrease of 1.9% with single family decreasing at 2.1% and strata at 0.7%. Uh, so from the split between single family and strata, I can see that there's a slight, there will be a slight shift in taxes from single family to strata. And import, another important note is that assessments are based on values from July 1st of the preceding year. So each year we produce what we call a heat map to show property assessment changes. The majority of 2024 assessment ranges between negative five to 5%, and that's the green and yellow color on the map. So neighborhoods that saw increases higher than the average include Amplified, Cedardale, and British properties. And that means that taxes would most likely shift to those properties in those neighborhoods. Uh, we have posted this heat map on the budget webpage and it is interactive so you can zoom in and take a closer look at different neighborhoods if you are interested. Just for comparison, um, we updated last year's heat map with this year's color legend. And as you can see, it is mostly yellow and red because last year's average change was uh, an increase of 5.2%. So overall, what does this mean on an average single family home? So for a home assessed at 3.74 million uh, with the median utility consumption pattern, the three proposed tax rate increase options would result in additional $640 in district taxes and util utility fees under the minimum budget option, which is equivalent to a monthly amount of $53. And in the preferred budget option, it would be an increase of $771 um, in a, a monthly um, or a monthly amount of $64. And then the best practice budget option, an increase of $853 or a monthly amount of $71. Um, and this, these numbers here do not include other taxing authorities uh, levies like the school district transit or the regional district. Okay, so I'll take it from here. Um, financial budgeting is a planning tool that uh, enhances the local government accountability and service delivery and sets out their legal expenditure authority. Legislation establishes requirements and deadlines for adoption of financial plans. Prior to adopting the financial plan, a local government must undergo public consultation. The level of com public consultation is not defined in legislation and may include opportunities for citizens to review, comment, and post questions regarding the financial plan at a local government meeting. The 2024 budget public consultation included two public engagement meetings. The in-person session was held on January 16. From that meeting, we received some very valuable input. The budget webpage has since been updated with new information. We also scheduled this uh, virtual meeting to cater the diverse needs of our residents. There is a, a budget webpage with more information for the public, along with an online forum open for comments and feedback from the public. This forum will be accessible for two weeks to grant input, uh, to gather input, and it will be closed on, uh, um, tomorrow at four o'clock. Staff presented a 2024 to 2028 five-year financial plan context pre pre presentation on December 11th council meeting. This presentation is published on the 2024 budget uh, um, webpage and is accessible to all West Vancouver residents. After the uh, public consultation period is closed tomorrow, staff will review the feedback received and compile changes to the proposed 2024 operating and capital budgets. On January 29th and February 12th, staff will bring forward the proposed 2024 operating and capital budgets uh, to the finance and audit committee meeting and council meeting for review. And finally, staff will prepare a single version of consolidated proposed 2024 to 2025 five-year financial plan and proposed a 2024 phase one capital funding report to March 4 and March 11th council meetings for three readings and uh, uh, final adoption. And that will uh, conclude our today's presentation.